All right, y'all. Now we're going to talk about ammunition, and uh, we'll try to make it quick as possible. You got a bunch of different bullets laid, laying here, and um, one thing: look at these boxes. Let's talk about the boxes first. You got all type of companies that make ammunition. Federal is a, a maker of ammunition. You got Blazer. You got little independent companies like this one, Special Ops Ammunition. Of course, you got people like Winchester and like like I said, Winchester Federal. Some of your, your more popular ones, the ones you'll find at Walmart. Uh, you even got stuff like made you know foreign ammunition. This is Perfecta. You will find this at Walmart. Uh, this is one of my favorite, generally low cost. <clears throat> as far as the cost of ammunition, um, tell you something about ammo. Being a dealer myself, uh, I, I'm not big on uh, carrying ammunition or anything like that because. Well, I'm a small business. I run uh, a unique type of business, but I'm not like a normal storefront. But uh, the, the profit margin on ammunition is very low. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, when you see these big stores carrying ammunition, it's kind of like uh, uh, it's just like a gas station, I guess, carrying some little off brand of chips or something like that. It's just having that selection. They're not making a lot of money off of that like they like they make off soda or something like that. Um, but they carry it because it's just a concomitant part of uh, of the business, and people it's a major part because people need ammo to shoot guns. But the profit margin is pretty low on ammunition. So when you go into your local store and you see prices, you know, at this or that, and it's like, damn, this high. Well, <clears throat> they they're they're you know it is that's the reality. Now you can go online. The cheapest place to get ammunition is online from these big companies who who knows how they're how they're getting their. Um, you know, getting the prices they're getting, they're probably buying. If you're buying in huge lots, then yeah, the ammo prices are more reasonable. Uh, it's it's more of a profit, but still a small profit. Um, so I always tell people support your local uh, stores. Um, of course, if you're down with us, support us. But uh, support the people locally. You know, sometimes spend the money because it helps keep those businesses in uh, in business, and and it keeps you from having to rely solely on online sales and that's what a lot of people don't get that's why this country is in the situation you're saying but I'm not gonna go into that but there are a lot of different manufacturers and, and makes of ammunition uh, just like with cars you got Honda it makes a, a variety of different types of models Nissan uh, Toyota they got you know all kind of different lines the the protege the uh, the Maxima the Sentra you know it's, it's like that so uh, there's there's a lot of variety out there and you really have to do your home search, homework, do your research. If you're buying a gun, if you're asking me what caliber should I buy, I always generally recommend 9mm for people who are beginners because the recoil is very light and controllable. 380 is not bad, but 380, even though it's a smaller cartridge with less recoil, sometimes you find the price will be a little bit more expensive simply because of the volume of sales. 9mm sell more, so their cost is a little bit more reasonable. Uh, 380 is not such a huge seller, even though it is a you know pretty much a popular cartridge. But I've seen nine mil on it. On, for example, I've seen nine millimeter for nine uh, for ten dollars a box, you know, um, at the cheapest nine to ten dollars a box. But you'll find three eighty, and the cheapest I ever seen it is like twelve dollars a box. I'm sure you know that that varies for different people depending on location. But for, on the average, three eighty is a few dollars more. And of course, calibers, uh, the cost of ammunition uh, increases with the caliber. Why? I can't tell you. Just the way they do it. Uh, 40 caliber here in Georgia is normally around $14 a box, $14.15. Uh, 45 caliber is uh, $15 and, and above, $15 to $17. Uh, I've seen stuff like 10 millimeter is can be ridiculous. Uh, definitely, it's better to buy 10 millimeter online because it'll be $20 to $30 here in Atlanta, which uh, you can go online sometimes catch like the S and B for like maybe $17, 16 $17 a box. Uh, but those are some of the realities. So when you're looking at buying a gun, you got to look at what's the cost to feed my gun too. Stuff like that 4570 I had in the other video. That's that's like a dollar shot. Every time I pull the trigger on that gun, that's one dollar I just shot down the range. So you gotta you gotta cost you know cost is real. When you buy something like some of my friends got 338 Lapools, those are like three to four dollars a shot, five dollars a shot depending on the type of ammunition. Same thing with 50 BMG. You paying five dollars every time. You know that you know it's a running joke. Uh, those guns shoot five dollar bills. But anyway, that's just something talking about cost. When you look at a box of ammunition, it's generally going to give you some uh, information on it. Let me see, come into focus for me. 
it's going to tell you like I can't see I'm looking at the camera it's going to tell you what caliber like you see that's nine millimeter Luger uh, it's going to tell you the weight of the bullet which is 115 grains and it'll tell you stuff like brass case and so on and so on and that's just telling you the caliber like I say and the weight bullets come in different weights if you look at this one it's telling you this is a 40 Smith & Wesson 40 caliber basically um, it's a 155 grain bullet LP means flat point and this one gives you a little bit more information and telling you that the bullet is traveling on average at 1100 feet per second from their test uh, that you're going to get some variance from that uh, when you if you run them full time now you'll notice this one uh, has aluminum on the, on the on the outside it's a 40 caliber 180 grain which is one of the more popular weights the standard weights for uh, um, 40 caliber is a FMJ full metal jacket and it'll say round nose aluminum case what that means and let's see if I have one. I don't have an aluminum case. I think out here. But what that's saying, let's look at this one. This is a steel case, but this is a rifle round. The bullets, most bullets are brass cased. They have like, you know, the little golden brass. They're made out of brass. Russian, a lot of Russian ammunition will be steel cased. Uh, and America also use aluminum cases. Aluminum case ammunition is generally going to be weak. This is the type. That's the type of stuff you take to the range. Is you know you're not going to be able to reload it if you're into reloading. Um, it's just you know it's generally going to be low power, just plinking ammunition. Uh, brass is generally what you want to buy. You know, just because it generally kind of speaks to you know um, higher power, better. You know, this is a better cartridge. Period. You know what I mean? They use brass. Uh, you notice on this box. It said uh, FMJ RN for round nose. Sometimes with handgun bullets, like you look here, between these two, if I can bring them up to you, and the camera focus, you see one of them has a flat top, a flat, uh, flat um, head, and the other one has a rounded, kind of pointy head. That's what it means. Flat point is just the tip of it is flat, and this one is rounded. Uh, if it's a RN round nose and LP is flat point, what is the, does it make a difference? Not really. Um, they're handgun cartridges. Um, they all kill. They all injure. When you look at handguns, speaking of power, uh, that's something my friend Timmy asked me the other day. Is one more powerful than the other? Uh, bullets can produce. Uh, the power behind the bullet is its velocity. Basically, when you look at the size of these bullets here, they're smaller than most rocks. If I were to throw one of these, I could throw one of these as hard as I could, but I couldn't kill anybody or injure somebody with them uh, to any real degree. So the power, when you're talking about power, uh, that has to be put in context. Um, uh, power in relation to what? You know, how far it travels, how much energy it produces. This cartridge is definitely has more powder behind it. It's a larger, you know, um, cartridge. The bullet, actually this bullet, the bullet head in here is larger than this one, potentially. Um... Well, I think this one is 180 grains, and this one is maybe 147 grains. But this one has more powder behind it, so it has more velocity, so it's going to develop more energy. It's going to have more push, and you know, if it it's probably going to have more impact on target. But what does that mean? The human body is different from shooting bricks, and and the human body tissues are flexible, and the human body can take some hits. It can take some damage. Uh, sometimes you see people take a shotgun, they'll shoot a piece of wood and blow a huge hole in it, right? And people are like, man, that'll put a big hole in somebody. No, it won't because people are not like solid materials. You know what I mean? A lot of times when people get shot, you can't even tell. You had to cut, they cut all their clothes out because you got to try to find an entry point. Now, if there's an exit wound, it may be kind of nasty depending on what they got hit with it and if there was bone involvement and all that. But otherwise, a lot of these rounds, if they don't hit a bone or something, they'll just rifle rounds and zip through. They'll zip through in and out like a pinprick. Um, when you talk about bullet handguns, you talk about knockdown power. Just think about that in relation to a rifle. You know, handguns are generally weak. They are weak in general. I mean, they will kill. Most, more people will probably kill in, you know, in non-combat situations by handgun. Most of them kill by handgun rounds. But the cause of death, generally the, pe the person has to bleed to death. It doesn't matter what they got hit with. If you put enough holes in people, they're going to bleed. If you can't stop the bleeding, they're going to eventually bleed out and die. So that's what that's about. Uh, when you look right here, let's see if I can focus it in. Take it back. I just kind of took um, this is um, when you look at this is a two two three round, 
and that's the projectile that's normally it fits in it like this see and when that gunpowder when that primer on the back is struck it you know creates a lot of pressure and then it pushes, pushes this bullet forward and uh, that's as small as that bullet is but it will kill you this is around and normally traveling about 3200 feet per second which that's what gives it uh, it's uh, that's that's what makes it dangerous is it's moving at about 3200 feet per second so even though it's small it's potentially lethal if you look at shotgun shells now this one is transparent where you can see you see that EMP for nine pellets this is a 12 gauge round see all those pellets in there when you fire this all those pellets are riding inside a carriage this little plastic carriage and all of that comes out and goes forward when it when it hits the air the carriage the aerodynamics allows the pellets to go forward but the carriage uh, is is um, kind of pulled off of it so the pellets fly forward so in this one round you have nine you have nine pellets that will impact somebody if at close range and of course as the range increases the spread increases and uh, there's no telling what it's going to do this round here's 12 gauge also you see it says 12 G and it's a two and three quarter inch shell Shotgun shells come in different lengths. Two and three quarters is one of your most standard. And they also have three inch shells, which of course is going to be longer and more powerful. See, that's double R. It'll say on there Buckshot 9P. But unlike this one, you can't see it. So that's the thing with shotguns. Uh, looking at these rounds, these are rounds that I recovered from the range. Yeah, I'm trying to see what this camera is. All right. That's a hollow point that was uh, hit something and sheared off. You see how that would make a nasty wound inside somebody if it, you know, in, with the jacket tearing like that. You see this round right here. You don't see much damage at all. Let me see once it comes into focus. You can see the uh, lines on there, and that's what they would use if they pull this bullet out of, out of something and wanted to trace it back to a gun. You see where the grooves in the barrel had left, you know, marks on it. That bullet actually is is intact and in good condition. Uh, it would be easy for a trace. You can see um, this bullet here. It smashed down. It hit something and just smashed. That was a hollow point. But it didn't. They don't explode. They just you know kind of open up like a flower almost. Like you see this one here. They just, you know, that's all they do. And some of them don't deform that much at all. That's a hollow point right there. And that's what happens a lot of times. Hollow points turn back into full metal jackets, even though you spend a lot of money trying to buy something unique. But it turned back into a full metal jacket because it gets clogged up with jacket material, clothing, or it goes through something and before it hits somebody or hits hits the target, the intended target. And now it's uh some of them just don't expand at all. This one, that's poor expansion. It didn't expand at all. And then you got pieces like this where, you know, this is the jacket from a bullet. Um, that type of material going through, you're going to create a nasty jacket, you know, hole. But um, that's it, y'all. That's all I'm going to give y'all on guns and stuff. So I hope y'all like it for the private page. You know, of course, we're going to go into a little bit more depth. Uh, we got some talks to do this week anyway. But uh, I thank y'all for y'all time and hope you, hopefully y'all learned something. If y'all didn't, oh well. Uh, y'all didn't pay for it. Take that pleasure in knowing that. And uh, if you disagree about something, fine, post it. Be, be polite and cordial in your conversation and we can go somewhere. Be nasty and we get at you. So that it, that's it, y'all. Um, like I said, you know, appreciate y'all watching. Um, y'all want to learn more? You know, hit us up, you know, private message. We deal with people. When people really want to know something, they seek out. We don't sell anything to people. Uh, if people want to know something, they get at us and we get back at them. That's it, y'all. Try to sell myself. Well, I'm going to do what everybody else do. People don't like to see stuff if they don't see who's talking. It's Alien Black. I'm out. Peace.